Carbon bombs are oil and gas projects that release the equivalent of more than a billion tons of carbon dioxide from the time they start extraction to the time they finish. A recent investigative report found that there are 195 such carbon bombs in progress around the world. And if all of these projects move forward, they are projected to unleash a staggering total of more than 646 billion tons of CO2, which will most certainly cause our planet to blow past planned international climate targets. As it turns out, not one, but two national parks, the Guadalupe Mountains and Carlsbad Caverns, sit nestled right among one of these carbon bombs, the Permian Basin. 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 The significant petroleum reserves in this region that extends about 75,000 square miles from West Texas and into New Mexico are launching the U.S. to the top spot worldwide as a leading producer of oil and gas. But how did all this oil get here, you ask? And what's the impact on public lands as we extract it more and more aggressively? Because frankly, the term carbon bomb sounds pretty ominous to me. We'll drill deep as we visit the area and learn more today on Nine Worlds. Before we talk about what happens when the oil comes out, let's talk about how it got in, well, under, in the first place. Strangely, we have an ancient sea to thank for the abundant oil resources you'll find in this area. Sedimentary basins where you find petroleum sources like the Permian Basin are typically remnants of ancient seabeds. Exploring the geological origins of petroleum takes us back millions of years to a time when oceans and shallow seas hosted a diverse mix of plants, algae, and plankton. When these life forms died, they all descended to the seafloor, they settled there, and over time, the weight of millions of tons of sediment and layers of plant debris compressed and buried them. I think we're out of frame now. No! It keeps growing. As the ancient seas evaporated, dry sedimentary basins were left behind, where the transformation continued. Ooh, geological transformation! Very spooky! Is it spooky? Ooh. It's not spooky, is it? I just don't think it's spooky. The rock is literally going... I guess it is a little spooky if you're being compressed by I am going from... ...and heat. From from pressure mode to heat mode. <laughs> Deep within these basins, that organic material underwent compression characterized by high temperatures with pressure from the layers of rock and sediment above. Now the absence of oxygen in these conditions led to the organic matter evolving into a waxy substance known as kerogen. But the transformation isn't done yet. Oh no, 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 no. The interplay of heat and time and pressure converts that kerogen into hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are really just chemicals that are a mixture of hydrogen and carbon. And they take different forms like peat or natural gas or coal based on the different combinations of heat and pressure. Hydrogen and carbon in your crafting table. Craft hydrocarbon. You have crafted a natural resource. It only took millions of years. That's how it all happened, generally. But specifically, our friend the Permian Basin formed around 300 million years ago, along the western coast of the supercontinent Pangaea. Here, the changes in sea levels, which would rise and fall, led to varying deposits in different subbasins, like the Delaware and the Midland subbasin. High sea levels resulted in reefs, while lower levels led to river deposits. Fast forward millions of years, and now we're extracting the remnants of this ancient sea, which took hundreds of millions of years to form into petroleum and astonishing rate. Most recent estimates suggest that this area is already producing more than 5 million barrels of oil and 21 cubic feet of gas each day. Counting barrels, that's a lot of work. Exactly how many sea creatures is that anyway? Well, already quite a lot, I'd imagine, with even more extraction planned. And this is how the area earned its ominous moniker of carbon bomb. You see, even though the U.S. already dominates worldwide fossil fuel production, it is working hard to outsize others around the globe in extraction projects planned for the future in a major way. The drilling projects planned in the United States have the potential to release 140 billion metric tons of CO2. Now, this is four times more than the entire world emits each year right now. And while these plans include many different projects across land and sea, the bulk of these emissions will come from the Permian Basin. One area of this formation, the Delaware Basin, is predicted to emit almost 28 metric tons of carbon, while another, known as the Midland Basin, will potentially unleash about 17 billion tons of emissions. This means that these projects alone will release more CO2 across their planned lifetime than was currently released this year 
worldwide. So the Permian Basin stands to have a notably outsized role in any environmental impact of planned U.S. extraction projects, impacting people around the world for generations. What about the potential impact of all this extraction right here, directly and immediately to the beautiful spaces that are geological and archaeological and environmental wonders visited by millions of people each year? At Guadalupe Mountains National Park, one of the most immediate and obvious impacts is air quality. Although with Carlsbad just a few miles away, it experiences very similar concerns. These parks are downwind of pollution from oil and gas development. The Park Service monitors air quality, measuring factors like visibility, ozone, nitrogen, and sulfur, and particulate matter. And based on their metrics, the overall air quality at both Guadalupe Mountains National Park and Carlsbad Caverns National Park is poor. A recent study by NASA examining Delaware Basin health and air quality found a positive correlation between emissions from area fossil fuel exploration and nitrogen dioxide concentrations above both these parks. And along with this came overall increases in nitrogen dioxide column densities around both parks in the past decade. What this means is that fossil fuel exploration is directly related to some of the air quality issues that we see in both of these parks. This is bad for both humans, plants, and animals. Nitrogen dioxide is a precursor to secondary air pollutants like ozone, and ozone can damage plants, especially sensitive native plants. Ozone is also a respiratory irritant. It can make you cough, it can make you have a sore throat, it can make it harder to breathe, and even make you more prone to infections and allergens in the environment. And medical studies show that the health problems caused by ozone may continue for quite some time after the exposure has ended. So if you love outdoor adventures like we do, your hike to the top of Guadalupe Bay Peak may be far more uncomfortable. And once you get to the top, you may find the visibility to see the 175-mile vista may be restricted anyway because on the haziest days, visibility drops to below 55 miles. And as you hike, you might find that increased nitrogen levels have caused those native species you hope to see to suffer and die while invasive species thrive and take over. And don't even get me started on how all this pollution impacts the sensitive and magical lichen. But if you're liking this video, maybe give us a thumbs up down there. Oh, just no. But remember, a good bit of this amazing Permian Reef is underground. This is a karst topography. So the impact of pollution isn't just in the air, it's also in the water that seeps through the system. It's not uncommon for highly protected national parklands to exist right adjacent to the less regulated BLM lands, and 90% of lands managed by BLM are open to oil and gas leasing and fossil fuel extraction. And of course, there are rules and regulations specifically addressing projects planned near caved entrances and car systems. But here's the problem. We don't yet know the extent of the cave systems in this area. For example, the amazing wonder that is Lechequia Cave, a place so precious that people are not even allowed to go inside. Which of course means we made a video about the place is believed to extend far beyond its currently mapped area in the protected space of Carlsbad Caverns National Park. In caves, they're basically like underground plumbing or a geological Swiss cheese. If a contaminant enters it, it will likely spread around quickly. But with only 2% of the area mapped for caves and karst, we know next to nothing about how this system works. And while all this is concerning for visitors like us who are worried about our personal health, we leave after a few days. What about the people who live in this area? 98% of the groundwater in the city of Carlsbad is from the Capitan Reef area. And water flows quickly through car systems with little filtration. So any contaminants that enter these car's aquifers would get transported rapidly and perhaps dangerously to the area's tap water. And of course, all these local impacts are happening alongside global climate change. Now, the first time we tried to visit Guadalupe Mountains National Park was during a global heat wave. We were driving across Texas and the transmission fluid in our car boiled and exploded out of the engine. That's how hot it was. And it was a really terrible day spent in a mechanic shop instead of being out on the trail. In the end, we decided it was too dangerously hot for us to continue an adventure across the hot and dry and desolate Permian Basin. We went back in the winter to visit. Y'all need to know we love our little adventure van, like a lot. We'll introduce you properly someday. I love that car so much. Look, we cannot deny the science that without significant mitigation efforts, the planned increases in fossil fuel production in the Permian Basin are likely to have a negative impact directly on these parks, the people that live in this area, and our ability to reduce the impact of climate change worldwide. Changes that already have had some pretty cataclysmic impact. 